So what is WorldScale? In a nutshell, WorldScale is a price basis for a hypothetical ship. So once a year, WorldScale looks at the cost of running a 75,000 ton ship. Why 75? Because it's in the middle, middle of the range. It's just, you know. Um, 75,000 ton ship using the previous year's bunker prices. Look, you can argue if you like, well, why are they using last year's bunker price? It doesn't make sense. That's the way they do it. A fixed rate per day, I think it's $12,000 or something. Anyway, it's in there. And they calculate the cost that if they use this ship under those conditions, certain speed, certain amount of times to load and discharge, how much would it cost to go back and forth to mostly every major oil port in the world? They calculate that. Okay, Rotterdam to Hamburg, that would be $6 using this ship. Rotterdam to New York would be $12 using this ship. Singapore to Chiba would be $9 using this ship. They do all these calculations and they print them in the book. So, and they publish that. And then they do this calculation for every single, well, not every single, but most of the major routes in the world. Okay, so you're going to say, okay, this is great. So they did this calculation for a hypothetical ship that doesn't exist. How does that help? We're going to use this sort of like a Platz, except it's a Platz that doesn't change through the whole year. Occasionally they modify it. If there's been some sort of changes in port fees or whatever, they'll put out flyers and modify that price. But typically these prices stay the same through the whole year. So what kind of a Platz is that? It's like if Platz printed a price on January 1st and that's the Platz price you use through the whole year. Well, this is what WorldScale does. But we're going to use this as a price basis. Does the market go up and down? Yeah. Shipping market. So would you be happy using this price all year long? Yeah. No, it doesn't make sense. The market goes up, the ship owners want a higher price, market goes down, you want a lower price as the charterer. So we can use this as a basis, but we need to adjust it. So there are two ways to adjust these prices. One of them would be the way Platts works, which we would say, okay, we'll take this world scale, what we call the flat rate, and add a dollar a ton. That's possible. That's what Platts does. Platts plus a dollar, Platts plus two dollars, depending on quality, supply and demand, and other things, size of cargo, whatever it is. That's not the way we do it in world scale. How do we do it in, in, in shipping? We multiply this. And the reason why we multiply it is what? Because this flat price is not for the 75,000 ton ship only, is it? These flat prices are used for all the ships. So what's cheaper per unit? A VLCC or 25,000 ton ship? VLCC. VLCC, economies of scale. But we're still using the same price. So just adding and subtracting is really not sufficient. So instead we're going to multiply, just the way it works. So we're going to take this number and we're going to multiply it by something. Now, when they did this calculation on that day, this represented a 75,000 ton ship. So if Singapore is 1165, if you were moving a VLCC from Singapore to Chiba, would you want to pay more or less than 1165? Less. less. So you would want to multiply this by a factor smaller than 100%. Maybe you want a third of this. You estimate that that's right. So you would pay 30% of this. And we call that world scale 30. Okay. So when we do a contract, the only thing we need to do for the price is put that. That's it. Oh, well, wait, wait a second. How, how, what if we go from, you know, from Rotterdam to Japan? Oh, well, look up discharge in Chiba loading in Rotterdam. Find the number, multiply it by 30%, by 0.3. Oh, okay. Well, what if we're going from Singapore to Chiba? Same thing. Look it up and multiply. You don't have to call up the ship owner constantly. You can just have it in your system and do the multiplication yourself. Okay. We said that the numbers in there are for a 75,000 ton ship and therefore on the day that represents world scale 100. 100% 100 of these numbers is the hypothetical cost the day they did that calculation for that particular ship. It's not a real ship. 
It's not real costs, it's just what they do. Does that mean that you have to pay less if you're using a VLCC? Definitely. There's no way that a ship owner could ever charge you more than world scale 100. What determines this number? Supply and demand. Hypothetically, we should have a cheaper unit cost for using a VLCC than using a 75,000 ton ship. Economies of scale. But the price is determined by the market, by supply and demand. Can you have VLCCs at world scale 300? Yes. Yeah, I know, I fixed them there. Or at least the equivalent. So the number that you apply doesn't really depend on the size of the ship. You would expect that if you're hiring a VLCC at 300, that a 30,000 ton ship is probably at 400. But it's not necessarily the case. 30,000 ton ship could still be slightly cheaper for a variety of reasons. But logically, it would, still be, it would still be cheaper. But this number doesn't have to be above or below 100 because of the size of the ship. This number is a commercial number. It's determined by the market, determined by negotiation, by supply and demand. Those numbers are printed once a year by world scale. So this is a great shorthand. So you do your contract, you call up the ship owner, I want to hire a 100,000 ton, a 75,000 ton ship to go from Rotterdam to the Mediterranean. So I will pay you the numbers written in the book because it was calculated using 75,000 ton ships. The ship owner will say what? Either he'll say, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, excellent, good, I agree. Because the market is terrible. Or the ship owner will go, no, excuse me. People are paying twice the numbers published in the book for 75,000 ton ships. If you want to hire my ship, it's world scale 200. Well, that's outrageous. World scale calculated these prices using a 75,000 ton ship. Yeah, using a 75,000 ton ship at, I think, $12,000 a day, time charter equivalent. And the market today is 30,000 a day. So the world scale numbers are, again, sort of hypothetical numbers. But it's a good shorthand that people use. But the real price is determined by the market. And that market price is this, or this, or whatever you negotiate. Okay? And this, again, makes it easy because your price clause is now. Yes? So the rights written in the book are two ways or one way Are for. Round trip? Yeah. It's calculated on a round trip basis. Okay, here's the hypothetical ship. And we need to know the speed because it tells you how long the trip is. So based on how long the trip is, it's the time charter value of the ship plus the amount of bunkers you require, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the, these are the calculations they use to make up what we'll make up, to calculate all those numbers in the book. And of course, they take the real port costs and stuff as they have them. Right. So the bunker costs and the port costs? And that number, yeah, based on, on this data, these data. OK. All right, so the, world, the numbers in the world scale book are called the world scale flat rates. The world scale multiplier is the commercial rate that we negotiate. That's a market number, and it could be anything depending on supply and demand. Just because you're hiring a VLCC doesn't mean it will be smaller than 100. If there's a strong demand for shipping, VLCC could be 300, 330, I think 350 is the highest I've ever seen, but maybe it's been more. So when you need to calculate how much your freight is going to cost when you finally figure out where you're going to go, you simply look up the relationship in there, you multiply the number in there, times the world scale rate you agreed. Now, it's a little bit trickier than that. Why? Suppose you hired a ship for 50,000 tons. Are you going to pay for 50,000 tons of freight? Not necessarily. It depends on what you loaded on the ship. If you loaded less than 50,000 tons, you probably will have to pay for 50,000 tons to the ship owner. What if you loaded 55? Typically, when in a case like that, everything over 50 is half off, what we call overage, is usually 
half for him, half for you. So if the freight rate that you calculate is $10 a ton, well, you hired it on a world scale 100, it works out to $10 a ton, you loaded 55,000 tons, you only have to pay for 2,500 tons more, or you could say the next 5,000 tons is at $5 a ton. That's usually how it works. Um, does a trader need to calculate that, or just leaves that to the accounting department? Yes, no? Yes, yes. He needs to calculate it? Why does a trader need to calculate that? The trader needs to know what his economics are. So the trader needs to actually know, how much is my dollar per ton cost? Does he need to know that the freight invoice is $2.4 million? Or $2,487,932? No. He doesn't need to know that, but he needs to know what his dollar per ton or dollar per barrel cost is, because that's how he works. I, I teach a class, um, the commodities class, at a business school, and I have them do exercises and simulations and stuff on trading. And you know, they buy and sell oil futures, among other things. And I get into situations where they, they bought one lot of WTI at 100, and they sold one lot back at 101. And I see on their, their reports and they show me, okay, 100 times 1,000 barrels, that's this much money I spent, and then uh, times 1,000 barrels is this much money I got back, and therefore my profit is this much. And like, why do you need to do that? You bought at 100, you sold at 101. Your profit is a dollar on 1,000 barrels. You made $1,000. Why are you calculating? And this is a simple calculation. It isn't always this easy. Why are you doing all this? I don't care that you spent $987,000 on these futures. And on top of that, when you're trading futures, you don't spend that money. It's not how it works. So all we really care about is what is our margin? What's the difference when we bought and sold? So if our freight is $10 a ton, all included, including the overage, whatever, we need to know that we bought at Platts plus a dollar. We have $10 of freight. Therefore, we're landed somewhere. I'm running out of ink. We're landed into that port at Platts plus 11. And at what price do we sell it? We sold it at 13, therefore we made $2. I don't care that my cargo cost $57 million. Those numbers are too big, it doesn't matter to me. Right. I need to know my unit costs, that's all that matters.